So, take number two. Oh my goodness, that was horrible. Of how we can. How we Welcome can. to how we can. So, it's how we can. It's how we can. But we're saying fast, how we can. So, uh, we just made a 15 minute video. <laughs> and we got done, we watched it back, and it was really, really, really blurry. So, um, we're doing it again. So, um, if it sounds like we're redundant, to us we are very redundant <laughs> at this point, but to you it's going to look like the first time that you've ever, you know, experienced this. So, um, how we camp. So, uh, to explain how we came about our name, uh, my name is not Howie, my name is Jim, she's Carla, we're the Dickinsons, and she was fortunate enough to win a settlement against a major medical company called How Medica. And um, the settlement was just big enough for us to buy this beautiful open range RV. Um, and so we decided that we were going to become RV campers. Um, huh? We decided we were going to become <laughs> RV campers. And so we did, we bought a camper and um, we've been, we've owned uh, Howie is the name of our camper from How Medica. See how that works. Um, we've had Howie for two years, and we've gone from Oklahoma City. We've been to almost every lake on the west side of Oklahoma, with the exception of Foss and Cobb. Um, and we've gone to the Grand Canyon in our RV with our kids. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it, but the one thing that um, we have always uh, kind of wished was that we had more resources before we, before we left. You gotta help us decide if we actually wanted to go to that place, or yeah. what we would need extra, or what would be different than we would normally expect yeah. Yeah. if we were camping somewhere. So, in Oklahoma specifically. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so we decided we were going to make some videos, and so when we would go to a lake, like this weekend, we are at um, the Great Salt Plains Lake in Jet, Oklahoma, that we would uh, make videos and kind of tell you what to expect when you get there. And so um, that's what we're that's what we're doing. And, and if there's, you know, if, if as you're watching this, and I don't know how many views we're going to get. I don't know how popular this is going to become. I'm not really looking for popular areas. I just want to help people because when we first started camping the most irritating thing in the world was you get someplace and realize that they don't have uh, super hookups that you're 45 minutes away from ice and um, so to, to, to have like a, a resource hey we're gonna go to Arcadia Lake let's look and see if there's a resource that says what you can expect at Arcadia Lake that's what What was you said in the other one? Uh, the um, each camping spot has like logs that make a border around the camping spot, so that when you're the one helping the driver back to the camper, you have very clear guidelines of where to be. Yes. And I can easily see that he's too far left or too far right, and it makes it really easy because some of the pad sites are just they're just a pad with gravel, and you yeah. don't really have boundaries. But this one has really nice. The negative to that is that there's no pad. It's just gravel and grass. So it's a little unlevel. So make sure that you bring some kind of like when you use your leveler, make sure that you have something to put underneath of it. Otherwise it might be a little bit like I like to use concrete blocks. Um, get them above the ground a little bit to give you a little more stability. Um, but it is a little bit on the unlevel side. Um, where like they have theirs just right on the ground. Yeah. That's not gonna be very stable. Yeah. Or if you have at least even just one of those plastic pads that will help stabilize it, or a cinder block or something. That's one of the things that I've noticed about most Oklahoma State Parks is that their pads are really level. Everywhere you go, oh, yeah. they're really level. You don't really have to do a whole lot of like leveling left or right on your camper. We haven't um, our, our leveling not much. drive on things rarely, like maybe twice. Yeah, and we've been doing this for two years, so yeah, it's pretty it's, nice. Normally, we just pull up, we do the front to back leveling, we're done. So that's that's pretty much all we ever have to do. So. Um, 30 amp only with water. There are no sewer hookups here at all. There is a dump station, so um, 
be prepared to conserve water, conserve sewage. That's going to be hard this weekend because... Four days. I mean, it's a four-day weekend, so we're probably going to completely fill our gray tank yeah. by the middle of the day tomorrow. Yeah. So, so yeah. we might have to get a bucket and dump it off or something. No. He can use the bucket. <laughs> no, so, I'm talking about dump out some of the gray water. Um, you can do a bucket. Uh, let's see. The lake itself is really pretty. A lot of shade, like you said. It's really pretty. There's a river that runs right behind where we're camping. We're about literally like 30 yards, maybe 20 yards from the water. There's a behind of our camper, it's like 10 yards to the riverbank. And then there's rocks going down to the river. Um, it's not really a river, it's like the runoff for the stilling basin. But um, there's people fishing all along the bank here. It is very windy today. Um, it was calm, very still last night. Um, but even with it being as windy as it is right now, it's not that bad. You, you might be able to hear it, but our camper's not rocking real bad. We had our our, uh, our awning extended for a while this morning, and it really wasn't affecting it that much, uh, except on one end. Uh, but, you know, so there's a lot of trees. There's a We're kind of in a little bit of a canyon, so we can feel the wind. We can hear the wind. It's not like it's, like it's more it's affecting the trees up toward the top more so than it is down at the bottom. So, uh, Let's see. We're about 15 minutes from town. Uh, that's important to know because um, when you we drove out from Oklahoma City, it was a two and a half hour drive from uh, West Oklahoma City. So if you're coming from Edmond, uh, Midwest City, add a little bit of time to that because you're going to be a little further uh, east than we were. Um, it's two and a half hours. It was two lane blacktop all the way here until. We got near Jet, and then we decided to take a shortcut, which we won't do that again because it was yeah. dirt roads. It was dirt roads. We were not expecting that. But we know now. Yeah. And now you know. So yeah. don't um, take the shortcut. Go through Jet. Go all the way around. Go through Jet, yeah. and you'll have blacktop the whole way here. And the only gas in Jet is a one pump. Two sides. One pump at a local convenience store. So if you are pulling your camper, you want to get gas in Enid. Get gas as you're coming through Enid, and then get yeah. gas going home, going back through Enid. That way, you don't have to worry about you know trying to figure out a way to get gas uh, once you get here. And that's also the only I really I don't know if they had a grocery store or not, I but didn't I didn't see, see one. one. It was just a little so, convenience store. Yeah, have ice, they have the necessities, but make sure you bring everything that you're going to need for the weekend, toilet paper and that kind of thing, because you're not going to be able to find it when you get here. I don't think. Um, I don't know if there's any other towns close to here besides Jet. But I'm pretty sure Jet's the closest one. Um, so there's that. First things to do. Well, normally we wouldn't be under the COVID restrictions, so we could go up to the Alabaster Caverns. They're not doing tours until June 1st, which I was kind of bummed about. And um, we did go to the Great Salt Plains area this morning and dug for Selenite crystals. These things. What I've been playing selenite with this whole crystals. time. So you that know was. Are made out of? Uh, selenite? Selenite, right. <laughs> Basically, selenite these are gypsum. This is, this is gypsum. So like the sheetrock that's in your house is made out of gypsum. It's, they grind this up and they make it into the sheetrock that's in your house. But this forms uh, from two different minerals that are in the water as it leaches through the ground. Um, basically, if I read this right, when the wet season happens, the water uh, covers the salt plains. Um, that water then leaches down through the uh, surface of the, uh, whatever that's called, the, there's, there's salt. There, that's, the, the two minerals are on the top and it leaches down through the, uh, there's a lot of it. When you drive out there, it's crazy because you pull off the road, the main road, you go through a little cattle crossing, and then it's just like endless expanses of salt plains. It feels like you're in the desert because yeah. it's just white yeah, and Yeah, white, as, as far as, as you can, can see. see. Uh, but that when it rains, when the water runs across it, it leaches down through that and pulls some of that mineral with it. And then as that evaporates back off, it creates these little crystals. Now, if Carla, if you can see it well enough, these crystals have like a little hourglass shape in it. You can see like an arrowhead on both sides. Hers is a little bit better than mine. That only happens in Oklahoma. The because only place in the world yeah. you can find this style of selenite crystals. I think it's because of the Indians because we have Indians <laughs> no, here and they're why. arrowheads. That's like it. That's like it's not. It's not. No, that's not it why. Is. It's because of the density but, of our sand. No, it is. It's trapped as the crystals are forming. I whatever. I, I I like my idea better. But whatever <laughs> the case is, they're really cool. Um, we have a video. It may either be at the end of this or as a an add-on to this. It kind of shows our trip to. We got a lot of them. The Salonite digging crystal place and what they call it. It's just the 
digging, the crystal Salt digging place. area. Um, and how to do it because there's a lot of like dig this, do this, do that. It's not that hard. It's not. It's you don't really need to sell at all, in fact. Um, Unless you're the first one on a new section that they open up, yeah. you do not need a shovel. No, don't even bring a shovel. We went into that in the other You need your hand anyway. and some old, nasty clothes you're ready to get dirty with. Yeah. Um, but we had fun there. We came home, came back here. We call it home. Yeah. Um, this is, by the way, this is Howie. I don't know if this is Howie behind us. Howie. Um, he's a good man. He's a good guy. Um, but yeah, so there's, you know, it's a lot, it, that was a lot of fun. We liked it. My son, he didn't really care much for it, but um, he's kind of, you know, it's a buzz he kill. liked it until we were done. And then he was just like, I, I didn't like that at all. You could give him a ice cream cone and be like, mm, come get on my ice cream. And then you was that good? Not really. It's just kind of a, <laughs> he's kind of strange that way. But um, anyway, so as far as the campgrounds are concerned, I think you'd like it here. Um, yeah. It's not one of our least favorite in Oklahoma. Um, it's probably not our favorite by any means because it's gonna be really hard to beat my favorite. But I mean, it's nice. And it's it's uh, it's, it's nice, we're in the middle of we're really in the middle of nowhere, middle of Oklahoma, nowhere. and it's nice because it's I like that feeling of just being away, uh, being a, or not being close to a lot of people. Um, it's just you and nature. Um, so, what do you think? It's great. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you. It's definitely not my favorite place, but it is very. of us driving in so you can see every single campground here for RV sites is a back end. There's no pull yeah, throughs. Yeah. So yeah. that might be a little tricky if you're new, but you know, just be patient. Apologize for what you said while you were back in the camper and <laughs> move on. <laughs> so with that being said, in the other video, I, I want to do this again because the other video is a wash. Um, we something that we all that we learned because we both learned a lot in, in, in the two years that we've done this. Because when we first got a camper, neither of us had ever owned a camper. We knew nothing. We were complete camper news. Now we're two years in. We've learned a lot. Uh, we've made a lot of mistakes. But because of that, we, we I feel like we have a lot more knowledge now. We can help people not make the same mistakes. Like I said, it's really windy. Um, but because of that, we've, uh, we've learned a lot of hard lessons. Um, the one thing that I would say, I'm out of breath now. I just feet away. Um, the one thing that I would say that I've learned probably first and foremost is patience because when we first got to doing this we would get here we'd get to our campsite and no matter what we did we were always in a hurry you know hurry to set up hurry to do this hurry to do that and what I've learned after two years is from the time you leave your house to the time you get home there's no reason to be in a hurry mm -hmm. you got like this weekend we have Friday to Monday and we're have no schedule there's no there's no hurry there's no rush you do whatever you want to do at whatever time you want to do it. So take your time, um, no matter what it is, whether it's from hooking up your camper to whatever. It doesn't make a difference. Just take your time and enjoy it. Because when you hurry, you break things, you forget things, you miss out on things, um, and you just and, and it just ends up ruining your experience. So slow down and enjoy the experience. Um, yeah, that's for me. So what, what would you say? Your what have you learned in two years of camping? Um, the biggest thing for me is bring more clothes than you think you'll need and that more than anybody applies to my 11 year old son but I, it applies to everybody. everybody I always pack more than I think I'll need because you never know when you know feel like the lake is nice and jump in or go on a hike and get sweaty and then take a shower and you know because this, this is not camping this is no it's lamping take showers it's and, lamping yeah. It's camping because you're outside, and we will get like when we went to the to dig, dig crystals. We came back, and I looked like a yeti. I was just covered. <laughs> he was. And so, but I mean, I have adequate clothes. Um, Bring more underwear than yes. you think you will need. <laughs> we don't need to go any further. Um, so again, this is a just a quick little series. Um, if you like what we're doing, if you're a camper, you're new to camping, and you want some information. We're just now starting these videos, so we're going to do one every weekend that we go out, wherever we go. We have been to a lot of lakes so far. We'll so, probably go back to yes. most of them because I like some of them are my favorites. Yeah, but we need to see some new ones. Too. Right. Well, yeah. so like what we need to do, we need to make a video for all the lakes we've been to. So you may have some. some we may do some videos where we act like we're at Fort Supply Lake, or we act like we're at Arcadia. Or no, we're not going to act like we are. We're um, going to reminisce. We're we'll reminisce. Yeah. About the days growing up in the first person you kissed. Yeah. Can you name us all? 
No. Okay. But we'll, we'll, uh, it's summertime by DJ Jesse Jones. You didn't know that? No. Okay. But we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll make videos and we'll make sure that every, all this, all the lakes that we've gone to are in there. If there's a lake you want information about, tell us. Ooh, we'll go we'll get in our there. camper and we'll go, we'll go and we'll experience it and then we'll come back and give you our review of what we think. But yes. make sure it's in Oklahoma because we're, I mean, don't give us like Lake Havasu City, Arizona. I would love to go there. Oh, that would be beautiful. But I'm not driving there tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so give us your ideas, um, questions that you have as far as owning a camper. We are going to have videos about like how to setting up, tearing down, how to dump your black tank, how to clean out the kitchen. Um, I didn't point at her. That was just because we both cleaned. So, um, all the things. So, um, if you like us and you like what we're doing, uh, like us, subscribe to us, share us, and share us. And I guess that's it. So, I'm Jim. I'm Carla. And we are How, How We Camp. Can. Thank you.